personal finance PowerPoint presentation, investing overview, prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia. Figure out your investment goals, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Alan Fairley, updated October 28th, 2020. So clearly at some point in our lives, we would like to be able to free up some cash, hopefully invest that cash as we do. We want to have clear goals for our investment goals and then set up strategies to implement that can help us to reach them. Our relationship with money starts at an early age when we notice family members exchanging coins or bills for all sorts of stuff we like. So obviously we learn early money good, money can be exchanged for other stuff that we want. So we would like to have some money so we can exchange it for stuff. So money's power and authority grow when we get our first allowance or paid chore. These early experiences foster habits and beliefs that last throughout your life. Its challenges multiply as we approach adulthood and are encouraged to take on loans to pay for college or buy a car. So when we think about the average kind of life cycle, then our experience with money will typically be, or an average will often be, that at certain parts in our lives, we might be taking on debt for things like the college, things like the car, things like a home, and then possibly later on in the life, we might be paying down those debts, for example, and then have more money, hopefully a nest egg or something like that for retirement. So we can think about different stages in our lives as we age, and we can think about the general arc of say, our relationship to money, our debts and our investments to get some idea of our strategies that we want to be putting in place, taking into consideration the life cycle. Parental figures set the tone for investment goals early in life, teaching us to delay gratification until we can break the piggy bank, allowing those coins to buy video games, clothes, or equipment. So hopefully we kind of learn the idea that if we delay some gratification, we might be able to buy something bigger or uh, spend the money possibly uh, more wisely oftentimes. And that, of course, would be a good principle when we're thinking about time value of, value of money concepts with regards to investments and saving for retirement and that kind of thing. So the, inti the intimate connection between investment and lifestyle grows more sophisticated as the years pass. The culmination of your working life is either a comfortable retirement or struggle to make ends meet. So obviously at the point of retirement, you'd like to be at the side of the comfortable retirement, which means you probably did some delaying of the gratification and put some investments in place, set some goals. So how life and investment goals uh, intersect. Investment goals spread into three branches depending on age, income, and outlook. Age can be further subdivided into three distinct segments, young and starting out, middle-aged and family building, and old and self-directed. So if you think about the average kind of life cycle that people will be taking, then typically you're gonna have different relationships with money, savings, debt, depending on where you are in the life cycle. There can of course be changes in people that life cycle is kind of outside the norm, but you can think about that normal kind of relationship as at least a baseline guide so that we can we can apply a strategy or start to build upon uh, that baseline for our own personal strategies. These classifications often miss their marks at the appropriate age with middle agers looking at investments for the first time and old folks forced to ridiculously budget exercising the discipline they lacked as young adults. So clearly when we think about this standard kind of life cycle, we wanna be thinking about what's the appropriate time for us to start the investment process for retirement. And at retirement, if we haven't saved enough, then it's likely that you have these kind of budgeting restraints at the point of retirement that you're not gonna be used to, of course, if you haven't basically built in those habits up until uh, the point of retirement. So income provides the natural starting point for investment goals because you can't invest what you don't have. So clearly when we think about the investments, we gotta think about it in relation to our overall budget and our balance sheet. We gotta be thinking, okay, do we should I be paying down the liabilities that I have or should basically I be investing? What's the appropriate time to be investing? Clearly we need to be clearing at least our expenses generally and then considering our liabilities in relation to basically earnings possibly we can have with regards to the investment. So the first career job 
issues a wake-up call for many young people, forcing decisions about 401k contributions, saving uh, or money market accounts, and lifestyle changes needed to balance growing affluence with delayed gratification. So clearly when you got the 401k uh, in place, you can look at the limits for the 401k and you're like, this is great, except that it takes a lot of money to put in. You got to have the cash flow to take advantage of the 401k, which could be a significant lesser amount of cash that you would have on hand for spending at that point in time if you're going to really take advantage of some of those retirement plans. So it's common to experience setbacks during this period, getting stuck in overpriced home rental or car payments or forgetting that your uh, guardians are no longer picking up the monthly credit card bill. Outlook describes the playing field on which we operate during our lifetimes and the choices we make that impact wealth management. Family planning resides at the top of the list for most people with couples deciding how many kids they want, their preferred neighborhoods, and how many wage earners will be needed to match those goals. So clearly lifestyle, how large a family we want, is going to drive some of our decision-making process. And then we're going to need the reality of how much income, how much revenue is going to be needed in order to meet some of those goals. Career expectations dovetail into these calculations with the highly educated ramping into their years of increased earnings power while others are stuck in dead end jobs forced to cut back to make ends meet so clearly the reality of how much money we can earn based on different circumstances uh, some under our control some possibly not under our control are going to factor into the decision making process investment goals become moving targets for many individuals with carefully laid out plans running into roadblocks in the form of layoffs unplanned pregnancies health issues and the need to care for aging parents. So oftentimes we might say, hey, I had an investment plan or at least a, a general investment plan in place and then life happens and we have some circumstances that can derail us at those times we want to basically try to get a goal back set up in place and possibly set up our plans that can be more encompassing so that some of these life events uh, won't kind of completely throw us off the rails. Those unexpected challenges demand a dose of realism when choosing a 401k allocations or deciding how to spend a year-end bonus with the old axiom, quote, saving for a rainy day, end quote, ignored by many folks until it's too late. So clearly, oftentimes, this puts us off the rails for our savings plan, but it doesn't really stop us from doing the spending, which means we might be putting less money into our savings for something like a 401k plan. And the 401k, if you have access to it through your employer, is one of the biggest kind of benefits that they can provide. So you will, really would like to, if you have the cash flow, to take advantage of the 401k plan. Fortunately, it's never too late to become an investor. You may be in your 40s before realizing that life is moving more quickly than expected, requiring contemplation about retirement. Fear can dominate your thinking if you wait this long to set investment goals, but that's okay if it adds a sense of urgency to wealth management. So clearly, if you're getting older and you're saying, hey, I could see retirement kind of down the road more and more clearly here, then that might be a motivating factor to start to save for it, to start setting goals for it. So all investment starts with the first dollar set aside for that purpose, whatever your age, income, or outlook. So it's just like Uncle Scrooge that earned that first dime and then invested it and so on. So of course, those investing for decades hold a major advantage while their growing wealth allows them to enjoy the fruits of their saving habits. So clearly, the earlier we start the investment process, if we have the cash flow to do that, the better because of the time value of money, because of the accumulation of wealth over time that can happen. Set up an investment goals workflow. Investment goals address three major themes regarding money and money management. First, they intersect with a life plan that engages our thought process in unexpected ways. Second, they generate accountability, forcing us to review progress on a periodic basis, evoking discipline when needed to stay on track. Third, they generate motivation that impacts our non-financial selves in positive ways that can improve health and mental outlook. Once established, the investment plan forces you to think about sacrifices that need to be made and budgets that need to be balanced, understanding that delay or failure will have a direct and immediate impact on your wealth and lifestyle. So once we basically look at this in more detail, then we can start to see in better perspective what you know the delay is going to cause us and what that what that delayed gratification 
can gain us if we start our investment goals earlier. This process includes a long range thinking and planning, allowing you to abandon a hand to month approach and set a priority list for the things in life you truly value. And this is something that we're not good at naturally. We're good at the day to day decisions when you think about just trusting your gut or training your habits. That's actually a really good thing for the day to day decisions. But when we get into those decisions for the long term, those are the areas that where we want the more formal planning process in place so we can get a better perspective of what is really going on. So use monthly or quarterly statements to review progress and re recommit to your chosen life plan, making small adjustments rather than big changes when the money flow improves or deteriorates. So oftentimes when we have like a, a raise that takes place or we get some kind of windfall cash or something like that, then we end up just increasing our spending to go along with it. But it'd be nice if we can think of our overall budgeting strategy and then, and then use that money accordingly uh, in alignment with our overall strategies and goals. Review your annual, annual returns periodically and enjoy seeing your wealth grow without direct intervention or a holiday check from a relative. Learn to deal with losing periods in a, na in a mature manner. In other words, your investments will go down sometimes and you don't wanna panic uh, when the investments go down because you're in the long term. You're in it for the long term and that's something you have to kind of train yourself and be able to be comfortable with as the stock market uh, goes up and down. If you have a good solid plan in place, then you got to be comfortable that you're going to you're going to ride out on the long term in general. So using the red ink to build patience while reexamining how your decision making may have impacted those negative returns. The Australian Investor Association recommends using the SMART S M A R T format when setting investment goals. Here are the elements. So here's one kind of strategy, a framework that you could use to help you with your investment goals. Specific, uh, make each goal clear and specific. And this is appropriate for basically goal setting just in general. When we set goals, we often have vague language. And, you know, it's kind of like when you ask someone, if you, if you imagine asking a politician, what are you going to do? And, they're say, and they say, we're going to make life better for you. Well, that's not a major, you know, you're not very specific. How exactly is that going to be the case? What do you want in retirement? I want to live well in retirement. Okay, well, what, what does that really mean? You know, you got to be more specific, measurable. Frame each goal so that you know when you have achieved it. So this is kind of close to specific, right? We want a specific goal and measuring it would mean it would be even more specific, meaning I don't want to just be able to describe what I'm getting to, but if I can actually put some numbers to it and then I have some some track record along the way, some some goals I want to hit along the way, that makes it a lot easier for me to see what is going on to track performance. Achievable, you need to take practical action to achieve a goal. So obviously when we set a goal, oftentimes you hear people saying, well, what you should do with a goal is you should shoot for the moon. And even if you don't hit the moon, you'll still go far. You know, you'll still have a good shot at, at it, you know. But oftentimes, uh, if, if we set a goal that's too far, what, what's going to happen is if we don't achieve it, then it's not like we achieve something that's still great. We might just, just not achieve anything at that point, right? So you want to you have the goal achievable because you want to be able to, to feel that it's something that you can get to and therefore it's a motivating thing. And this is clear with any goal that we're going to set. If, if you're setting goals as a supervisor or you're setting goals basically for yourself, there's always this problem of, well, if I set the goal too far out, then it's going to be demotivating because people know that they can't hit it. And so that's going to be a problem. If you set the goal not out far enough, then people clear it quite easily. And that doesn't give you any sense of satisfaction if you clear a goal that was too easy. Relevant. Determine whether your goals relate to your life and are realistic. So clearly you like to set goals that are going to be relevant goals to you. Time-based, assign a time frame to each goal so you can track progress. So when we think about a goal, what do we want? We want to we want to live well at some point in the future. Well, you need to know how long, how long, how far out is that? How I want to be financially secure at some point in the future. I want to have this much money to be financially secure in the future. Well, that's got to be measured in terms of something measurable, which would be time measurement or dollar measurement possibly, and as well as basically time 
uh, measurement, how long it's going to take. So start by writing a document or journal that lists each investment goal and how you'll, you'll measure progress. So we want to think about you know our investment goals. We can list them out and then think about how, how we can measure how we're doing to get to them. Uh, list as much detail as possible concerning both short-term and long-term objectives. So you might then kind of think about your goals for like retirement goals, for example, and then you might have uh, your short-term goals. You might even go more breakout than that. You might say, these are my five-year goals, This is, or maybe one year, five year, 10 year, and then you know retirement goals or something along those lines. Let's say you want to save for retirement, but also plan to own a home in a safe neighborhood with enough cash left over for an occasional vacation. Now review your current financial situation, noting how well you've handled money to this point and the steps you're willing to take to achieve that list of goals. So clearly, if we're talking about retirement, we're talking about a long-term goal towards retirement. If we're talking about saving then for a home, that goal's probably somewhere into the five-year kind of goal type of thing that uh, and so we've got to tailor our our needs our saving and investment needs to those specific goals so uh, it may be premature to consider the practical action required or time frames needed to mark progress if your investment goals are unrealistic outlandish or don't match your current or expected earnings power so you might be like i want to live in a mansion you know in retirement or something like that and you might be looking at it and say well now you have an unrealistic goal so you you might want to like you obviously want to get the goals in that range of not being too easy but not being too out of range too outlandish so that then you can make your strategy towards those goals and everything will kind of you know make a bit more sense in that case so you can dream about fulfilling life's desires but investment planning requires a brutal reality check before executing the needed action plan so clearly when you're setting these goals and you're looking at them and you're actually starting to map them out that gives you a bit more of a reality check which is good because we want to live in like reality here and try to figure something out that we can actually achieve and then get some satisfaction hopefully of either achieving it or or putting our best effort towards towards doing something that is you know doable uh simply stated if the plan doesn't match your reality or your goals throw it away and start over uh, concentrate on baby steps rather than the broad brush uh, daydreams. So again, the b broad brush daydreams might be those kinds of goals that aren't measurable, aren't grounded in time, right? And so, so you want to get those kind of things that are going to be measurable, that, that are grounded. It's kind of like any other thing you do. If you're working out or something like that, then if you just set the goal that I want to be really big or run this far or something like that, then that's not something the more measurable that you can get it you can measure the gains and you can get satisfaction from the process of the gains which is the point of life we should be enjoying the process so a small 401k contribution may be all that's needed to get the investment plan on track during its infancy employers sometimes match your contribution to a certain level which allows you to evaluate uh, to eventually think about more sophisticated planning so clearly the 401k is is a huge tool if you have access to it. If you don't, you might have access to an IRA, for example. But the fact that you get a tax benefit from it uh, is huge, although you got to be careful with that in terms of your cash planning strategy because it's kind of locked under that umbrella of the 401k plan. There might be a matching if it's a 401k plan. So that's clearly a place where a lot of people will start their retirement planning uh, at least financial adv advisors recommend you allocate the maximum allowed whenever possible although that's uh, unrealistic for many young people just starting out in their careers so clearly if you could max out the 401k that would be good because that would mean that you're putting money in for retirement you're getting a huge deferral if you're able to actually put it in there for retirement but that requires a significant amount of cash flow in order to do that more cash flow than a lot of people might have to max out their 401k at least in their early years so this is especially true with the uh, enormous burden of student loans incurred by people born after 1990. so a lot of the, the process of of kind of uh, subsidizing education has actually increased to the cost i would say leading to higher student loans 
causing people problems. They're managing time frames, break investment goals into short, uh, short, intermediate, and long-term segments whenever possible, matching the natural life stages of youth, middle age, and post-retirement years. So you can kind of think about the arc of someone's life. So it's it's normal for people to kind of be in debt in the middle of their lives when they're trying to grow the family. They got college debt possibly, and they got a mortgage possibly at that time. That's not unusual. It doesn't mean you're kind of behind the curve at that point because that that's usually what in, happens oftentimes. And then, of course, later at a later point in time, you're hoping to pay down the debt, pay down the student loans, and then be in a point where you've got, you know, pay down the liabilities and you have a, a set amount of assets. So taking that kind of life st structure, normal kind of life structure in play, and then thinking about your short term, intermediate, long term, you might break it down more than that. You might call it, call it a one year, a five year, a 10 year, a retirement goal, for example, and break out your goals in those categories. Aligning bank and brokerage accounts to short and intermediate terms also makes sense while retirement accounts focus exclusively on the long term stiff penalties are incurred when accept, when accessing those funds prematurely. So if you put money into into a retirement account, a 401k or an IRA, then it's under the umbrella of this retirement account. You got a tax benefit to put it in there and you basically promised you're going to use it for retirement. That's why you got the tax benefit. If you take it out early, it's going to be a problem, but you get a huge deferral, which is great. So if you can put the money in there and lock it in there until retirement, that would be that would be good. You might be able to take it out for emergencies or certain situations, but there could be penalties and paying tax on it. Obviously, the shorter term goals, you might use some of the same investment tools like like uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds and whatnot. But you're going to want to basically have them in an account that's not under the umbrella of an IRA or a 401k so that you can use them to do whatever you want to do, like purchase a house or something like that. In fact, there's no good reason to tap into IRAs, SCP, SEPs, and other retirement accounts unless dire circumstances offer no viable alternatives. So once it's in the IRA, you really want to keep it in there unless you have to take it out for an emergency. Short and intermediate term goals assist the acronym SMART planning as well, allowing a quick review to gauge savings progress for a home, automobile, vacation, or family obligation. Intermediate term planning can also include a more generalized account, donating the capital set aside for the inevitable, quote, rainy day, end quote, something like an emergency fund, for example, that is not under the umbrella of something like an IRA or a 401k plan, so that when we have that rainy day, when we have that emergency, hopefully we have the capital, we have the cash necessary to deal with it without needing to tap in to the IRA or the 401k plan, which can be expensive. So this emergency fund allocation can also serve as a firewall between life's surprises and the much larger retirement account, allowing that capital to be left untouched, set to fulfill its intended purpose, meaning we want to keep the the 401k plan in there for retirement rather than tapping into it when we have an emergency by setting up an emergency fund to it in order to to deal with those life's emergency don't despair if you've reached middle age without investment planning because major benefits accrue quickly when the task is first engaged so even if you're in middle age and you're saying hey i should have started this process earlier well we are where we are at at this point in time and we're going to start here and move forward of course, playing catch up will be required if your finances are flashing red ink, necessitating lifestyle changes until your income matches or exceeds expenses. So clearly, if we're living kind of outside of our means, we need to basically have a wake up call at some point in time and start to get within our means so that we can also start to have the cash flow necessary to plan for retirement. Debt management will be needed to get on the right track because it makes no sense to earn 5% or 10% annually in an investment account when multiple credit cards have hit their limits at 18%, 20%, or 25% interest rates. So this is where we have to have our balance with regards to our liability and our, our assets or our investment planning. If we have some liabilities on the books, such as credit cards that have really large uh, uh, interest payments that we are making, then we're negating the gains that we would be having by putting money into the investment. You can make arguments for certain types of loans. You might say, well, I have a mortgage, but my mortgage rate 
is is reasonable and so then the question would be well would your be money be better spent paying down more of the mortgage but you have but if the rate is low enough and you get like a tax benefit maybe you can make the argument then to be putting the money into the investment instead uh, because you're hoping that you're going to make a, a return larger than the money that you would save by paying off say the mortgage but if you're if you have debt that has high costs to it say the interest rates are quite high then you would like to basically do something about that kind of debt possibly roll it in uh, to consolidate it or something like that to get a more reasonable rate and or pay off the debt so that you can then use the money beyond that for investments we might talk more about that in future presentations